Hey friends, it's Crystal Lynn and I'm broadcasting from the mountains of Cartago, Costa Rica. Now, it's really beautiful here and um, before I get started, I want to very quickly tell you about my group coaching and healing circle. I'm going to be hosting it before each new and full moon phase. So it's called Emotional Wellness Happy Hour and it's an opportunity for you to get coaching and that, that coincides with the moon phase. So when we're doing shadow work together or when we're, you know, when we're working on shadows or when we're doing the new moon phase and we're working on creativity and, and, and goals and calling in our desires, you'll be able to have a nice, easy, very inexpensive. <laughs> it's only 25 bucks to join the, the group session, which is great. It's a great price. My normal fee is like a hundred bucks for a one-on-one -on -one session. And with this session, you actually get to learn from the group and enjoy the benefits of getting, you know, one-on-one -on -one attention. So, um, I wanted to tell you about that before I tuck into this session, and I'm a little bit distracted because there is a really beautiful little bird on my um, balcony or on the terrace. And the thing is, um, so I'm in, I'm in Costa Rica right now, and I think he just spotted me. No, he didn't spot me, he spotted another bird. Um, just the birds are absolutely beautiful here. They are so vibrant in color and um, they're everywhere. And it's almost like just watching poetry and art in action, you know, like in movement. It's amazing how beautiful the wildlife is here. So yes, there's this little bird that is just perched here and he has a beautiful yellow chest and it's making me think about the solar plexus and, um, moving forward into 2018. So, all right, oh, and I didn't tell you that the title of the group coaching, the Emotional Wellness Happy Hour, um, this particular session, because each session is gonna go with the current moon, this new moon, which happens on the 17th, we're having our session on the 16th of January at 6.30 in Costa, uh, Costa Rica time, right? Um, the subject for that, the topic of discussion or topic of study will be discipline, integrity, and divine feminine badassery in 2018. So again, Emotional Wellness Happy Hour is an opportunity for you to get the help that you need to not have to pay, you know, for a private session, but you learn from a group when you're doing group coaching and we're all a vibrational match to one another because we're coming together. So we're all holding mirrors for one another for our own healing. So one person's problem is another person's problem, you know, and so you'll come with your issues and what you're working on, but somebody else is going to come with their issues and you're going to be like, yeah, that's my issue too. So it's really a great experience and I hope that you'll join me. So, um, I said, I think I told you that the price is just 25 bucks. Yeah. I think I can go ahead and move on and tuck into our, um, our report. Okay. So for, this week's spiritual guidance, right now I'm, I've written it and as I said, I'm in Cartago, Costa Rica. And while I'm here, I'm just writing, being present with myself and connecting with my wild instinctual nature, my own life force energy. So here in Costa Rica, it's really easy to see life force energy. It's in the birds like the beautiful, vibrant birds. It's in the grasses. It's in the abundant crops and the bushy trees. And I'm sorry it's so foggy right now because I would love to be able to show you and help you appreciate this beautiful landscape. I'll post some photos on my, um, on my website, but it's really magnificent. It is rainy, so much rain. 
and it's really cold like I kind of wish that I brought a lot of warm clothing but you know I didn't so I'm keeping myself cozy inside with the heater and with a scarf and you know layers and layers of clothing but life force energy is really evident here you know it's just everywhere you look is green for me, life force energy is really, really evident in nature. There are lots of butterflies and birdsong and beautiful flowers. And everywhere you look, it looks like the wild jungle. And for me, that reminds me so much that I'm in the arms of the goddess. So this week's spiritual guidance is coming from the divine feminine. And she is wanting us all to consider our greatest potential. So I ask you, beloved friend, what did you come to this earth to do? What is your life purpose? Why are you here? So many of us are in survival mode and we don't take the time to get creative and even think that we have the right to thrive. We are co-creating our experience with the universe. The message that I'm getting from the richness of this landscape is that I am really ready to give birth to something really strong within myself. And I know that if I'm feeling it and you're watching this video, I know that you're feeling it too. And the message that has come forth to me um, from my sitting here is that these deep internal feelings that I'm having, these, these deep stirrings, are about unpacking the suitcase of our greatest potential. And it's time for us to start making whatever we find in our potential it's time for us to make that our greatest priority. We can't sit back and wait for things or wait for the right time. We have to start working on it now. It's an invitation to be a conscious co-creator with the universe. So life force energy was speaking really loudly to me yesterday. I was observing nature. <laughs> I was watching the birds. I was mesmerized by the ants. I was observing just the flora and the fauna. And my heart really, really began to sing with this song of springtime. I felt like spring was opening in my heart and the goddess Ostara came very strongly to my mind. Now, the goddess Ostara is a very sexy and energetic, voluptuous, generous spirit. She's from the Germanic tradition. She's full of life and vitality, but she's slow in that she unfolds like the petals of a flower in her own time. She's fully present in every moment and every part of her existence is about being strongly connected to the now. And I see her everywhere in the, gre the greenery of Mother Earth. The goddess Ostara is also known as Eostre or Easter. Her symbol is the fertile rabbit and Easter eggs. So it's from her that the concept of Easter comes, but also the concept of rising from the dead. That's Christianity came much later with that concept, but it came from this beautiful goddess of spring. So yesterday I'm hanging out and I could feel this goddess presence within me and around me and I felt her energy urging me to create and to envision my future and to release any dark and restrictive thoughts and experiences that have been burdening me. Burdening me. And I'll tell you, I said yes to her, even though I did not know how I was going to get to this kind of enlightened state where I feel like I'm being pushed. Like I can feel the goddess working me and saying, come on, let go, let goddess, let go, let goddess. Right. And I'm saying, OK, but I don't know how you see, I'm so uptight 
goddess, voluptuous, beautiful, eostre, I don't know how to let go and let goddess, right? But while my ego is saying, I don't know, my mouth and my mind are saying, I don't care if I don't know. I'm saying yes to this wonderful energy who is here. So I said yes to the goddess and I meditated on what I desired to manifest this year. And I sat down with my computer to write this week's spiritual guidance and to, you know, get my blog set up. And I was wondering, where do I begin my insights? How should I focus my attention? Where, where do I guide the people that are listening to me? Right? What's important for me to share with my audience? What's important to share with my readership? I decided to pull a card from Doreen Virtue's Goddess Oracle. So I sat and I quieted my mind. I tuned into my higher self. And guess whose card I drew? Goddess Ostara. Goddess Eostre, right? So come on, Master Manifester. You know it. So the message on the front of the card reads, fertility, it's the perfect time for you to start a new project, to access new ideas, and give birth to new conditions. And when I turned the card over, it said, springtime is any time when the light increases within your mind and your entire system. And I was like really blown away by that. So this is obviously about springtime within us. Now, I often contemplate the seasons because I know that we humans, like the earth, have seasons. I used to think that winter was all about hibernation. You know, I watched Yogi Bear growing up. I was perplexed because in spite of winter, we people had to actually get up and make our livings. We couldn't just be like sleeping bears, you know, or could we? You know, I kind of wondered, like, how can I hibernate during the winter when I'm clearly alive and accountable to work and family? People are active and we have obligations, right? So in my journeying, I've discovered, discovered that rather than sleep the winter away, we can keep living our lives, but we can slow down and do a little bit less. Now, for me, by surrendering my ego's control of how things ought to be, I could surrender to how I feel. In winter, spirit guides me and my intuition guides me to feel less pressured to accomplish, but to feel more inspired by my connection to people and my own inner presence. It's cold outside right now and it's super foggy. I'm not going walking today. It's over. It's not happening. Instead, I'm just going to sit here and sip tea and appreciate my inner world because that feels right to me. In winter, I get closer to people because we come together and we like to cuddle up and sip warm drinks and sit around the fire and we don't like to bar hop. We like to get in one bar and hang out, okay? So, here I am today and the goddess Ostara is still very strongly with me and she's blossoming my heart and she's softening the hard edges of my mind. Now fear of change is stirring up the depths of my shadow self so that I can get free of the limitation and unite fully with her. The message on Doreen's virtues, Doreen Virtue's card um, it's like an answer to my question, why in the dead of winter am I getting a message from the goddess of spring? And again, she says that springtime is any time when the light increases within your mind and in your system. And here I am in, in Costa Rica, I'm clearly becoming enlightened by what I'm experiencing here. Life force energy is all around me and I'm really embracing it and taking it on. Now, springtime is about birthing your dreams and following the creative, warm spirit, warm, uh, yeah, the warm spirited guidance of your heart. But before spring comes winter, 
and there must be a time of conception before there's birth. So the goddess has come forth as a wake-up call to dive into our heart's desires and lay the groundwork for them now. So what do you want to birth? What tangible and viable efforts are you making today to create the life of your dreams? What badass butterfly goals and dreams are lying dormant in your heart because you're too afraid in your caterpillar mind to take action on them. Springtime arrives in two months, but spirit is calling us to take responsibility for our desires now. This is really important. As I write this, it is the end of the full moon and cancer phase. The last two weeks have been about looking at our dark side and honestly confronting our deepest fears. We will have a new moon in Capricorn around January 17th. That is a time of powerful creation. Our job is to direct our life force energy into our heart's desires. The heart's desires are different than the ego's desires. And if you don't know this by now, you need to start reading my posts more deeply. There's a difference between the two. The ego comes from a place of story. It perceives from your senses and interprets what it feels according to what it has experienced in its past. Ego has a judgment about what is it, ex it has experienced. It puts things in categories of good or bad. It cannot perceive beyond what it understands in its limited and judged experience. Your heart and soul, on the other hand, is unlimited and unrestrained by space and time. Its desires are not wants. Wants imply a lack of an object's presence. Desires are a natural extension of a state of being into form. So I'm sitting in a beautiful cabin in the middle of a beautiful land because I follow my heart. My heart is wild and sensuous and powerful and creative. What I see is beauty all around me and it is a reflection of the truth of who I am. So as you know from following my reports and videos, 2017 was a foundational year for our being. The universe pushed us into awakening the masculine sense of authority within us. And interestingly, we saw the toppling of some very powerful men and their structures and they have been abusing their power. I think that's totally symbolic of the universal dynamics that are happening inside of all of us. It's wonderful and it's scary, but it's necessary. We are coming into balance. In 2017, we tended to think a lot. We thought a lot. We felt, but we tended to take a more masculine, logical, and rational approach to our circumstances. And the changes we wanted to see in the world came about, you know, by really using our active selves. We were very confrontive with our thinking. We were not going to be bullied by dominant forces seeking to keep us in chains. Not the forces on the outside of ourselves, nor the forces inside of ourselves. So in 2017, we dug deep and we extended our powerful dreams and ambitions outwardly into the world of physical form. And there was tremendous growth within us as we no longer saw ourselves as victims of circumstance. There was definitely something awakening within us. We desire to take charge of our own lives and our destinies. In 2017, we aimed for authority and we got it. Lots of us spiritual types really started to embrace the idea that we are not our ego, but instead we are something beyond the limitations of the personality, the gender, our race, our nationality. 
this concept moved from being just a thought in our head and became a reality in our life. We found true authority in our higher self. And when we tuned into that aspect of ourselves, we found that the truth of who we are is ultimately badass. We found evidence of our power and life force energy everywhere. We wanted to harness that power and use it for good. Okay, so look, we're still working this out. We are not perfect. We're still understanding what it means to author our lives and to stand in our true power, but we are on the road and we are loving it. I'm in Costa Rica. I love it. Now, we know that dreams, desires, and goals, when coming from the heart and aligned with the soul's agenda, are more easily attained because there is no resistance. When we get the little egoic mind, the caterpillar mind, out of the way, we are transformed into something powerful. We ended 2017 as badass butterflies surrendering the, the caterpillar mind, right? Dreams, desires, and goals are totally important to the masculine sense of self, the masculine sense of authority. And we still have to keep working on what we want to manifest in the world. We have to focus on our goals and dreams and take steps every day to nurture and build them. But now in 2018, we're being called to the divine feminine aspect of authority under the tutelage of the moon, the badass butterfly moon all year long. Okay, so this is the year when our feeling nature, our creativity, and our tender-hearted and unconditionally loving nature expresses itself most profoundly. This is the year of the divine feminine, the mother within. 2018, if you add all those numbers together and then reduce them to the smallest number, it's a two-year the year of the moon. The moon represents our shadow side, and you can be sure that there will be plenty of opportunity to confront this in 2018. Lots of time to do shadow work in 2018. But the moon also represents our gentle and nurturing side. We have to remember that there are two sides to the moon, and there are many, many phases. The moon changes astrological signs every two days. This year, our moods and feelings will be as varied as the moon phases. Don't let this scare you, my friend. Don't back away from the opportunity that your ego sees as an obstacle or even a challenge. Instead, know that your various moods and feelings are stepping stones in your evolution. Your job during this time is to practice riding the waves of change like an expert surfer. I don't surf, but I think it's clear that a surfer doesn't resist the wave, but rather rides with it with some kind of joyful, like, I'm going with this, it feels good. The surfer's core is strong, and they are in a state of flowing and allowing and guiding. Your job during this lunar year is to also go with the flow. In order to do this, though, you have to keep yourself anchored in trust. Now, this year, more than ever, you must stay spiritually tethered to Father Sky and Mother Earth. Otherwise, your unevolved ego will become a distraction to you. Father Sky is the flow of unconditional love from above. Father's sky is light, the sun, divine thought. Mother Earth is the material form of unconditional love. She is the void, which is like a peaceful darkness, a cool, inviting cave, or like a, a warm and nurturing womb. She's the moon, and she's divine intuition. So Father Sky and Mother Earth are your anchors, and when you tether yourself to them through your daily practice of meditation and prayer, energy work, breath work, journaling, 
conscious co-creation, which is also known as visualization, you will successfully weather every storm. The monthly new and full moon rituals that I put out for you will also help you be strong. They are there for you to take and enjoy. So please use them. And I want to remind you that I am a badass spiritual empowerment coach. And if you need me, I'm here. I offer a complimentary emotional wellness strategizing session where we'll discuss any of your needs and I can talk to you about my programs and help you find one that can help you thrive. So when you're ready to make the changes in your life and you want some help, please consider me, right? Definitely though, book in for that free session so we can talk and you can interview me and see if I can help you, yeah? So going back, staying on track because that's what I do, you connect to Father Sky and Mother Earth via meditation and prayer. All you got to do is just sit and relax, close your eyes, open your mind, and focus on your breathing. And when you're ready, you bring your awareness to the top of your head and you feel it opening to receive the loving light pouring in from heaven. And you feel that light energy filling up every part of you like you're a vessel, which you are. And when you feel yourself full of light from above, inhale the energy of the goddess from below. Use your spiraling vortex of sexual energy at your genitalia to pull up the earth energy. Yes, I did just say all that. Now for you, you can easily sense the goddess energy is white or red light, okay? That's a simple way to imagine the Earth's energy, and it's very powerful. But for me, something really special happens when I pull in Mother Earth using my vortex of my root chakra, my genitalia, all right? I use my breath to guide it, but all my focus is on my root chakra, and I can feel the vortex pulling in this unfathomable loving connection and it feels really good. So when I take in the energy of the goddess, I take in the flowers, the trees, the soil, the vines, and when I inhale, I open my chakra, and I feel the energy of the, the storm, the rain, the wind, the fire, the mountain, it's everywhere. My whole being expands as my ego disappears, and I become one with the world around me. I become the, flow the, the, the flowers, the rivers, the clouds, all of it. I just allow myself to connect. So when this happens, there is no separation. And this is where trust is strongest. Trust is simply the firm belief in something. And most often, we derive our conditions for trust on ego's perception, or we base them on ego's perception. We trust what we have experienced in the past more than what we are experiencing in the now. I was wading through a river the other day and my river with, and my ego was saying, rocks are slippery, you're going to fall. Ego said that for every single rock. And of the 20 rocks I navigated, guess how many rocks were slippery? Not one. Ego will lead you from its perception of its past experiences all the time. That's its nature. Higher self leads you from connection with Father Sky and Mother Earth. It leads you from source energy. It leads you from unconditional love and unconditional trust. So this is why we have to follow our hearts and let go of our ego's perception. There will be lots of new experiences for us this year in 2018, but the greatest experience of all will be the one that we have with trust. As our beloved moon initiates us into a year of letting go and letting goddess and to surrendering to trust, the goddess Ostara is ushering us into creation. Now friend, bear with me as I attempt to prepare you for something else that feels very important for me to share with you. Now, I told you a couple of weeks back, the year 2020 is super important for us because we are going to be having a terrific lineup of constellations in the sign of Capricorn. Okay, so 
I know we've only just started 2018 and you're probably wondering why I'm jumping ahead two years. Well, the groundwork we lay between now and 2020 has the potential to launch us into our greatest potential. And I want to make sure that we are doing the work to make this happen. Hence, Emotional Wellness Happy Hour and all my other programs. So the backstory on this week's spiritual guidance is that right now, right now today, the Sun, Saturn, and Pluto are currently in Capricorn. The Sun will stay here until January 21st, but Saturn will be here for two years and Pluto will be here for way longer. Now this is really auspicious for the midheaven in the long run because Saturn rules the midheaven and Pluto empowers it. Now the midheaven is your contribution to the world. It's what you give to the world and how it is received. It's your vocation, your career, your self-expression. It's your reputation, any achievements or honors or recognition, anything that is centered even around your fame. Things like fame come into the midheaven. So Saturn rules this house and he just moved back into it a couple of weeks ago. Now this is a really good thing if you value excellence, hard work, and digging deep. You will be very happy if you feel comfortable with paying attention to detail and making sure that all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed. If you want a quick and easy solution, you're up shit creek. I'm sorry, Charlie. The universe is not gracing us with quick fixes that are rooted in superficiality. It's just not. If you don't want to work diligently, you might find that you're forced to do so by Saturn. I suggest that you practice non-resistance to his energy. The universe, while Saturn is in his home in Capricorn, is all about high quality, attention to detail, and the success that comes when you are committed to excellence. Saturn is a disciplined planet. Saturn and Pluto are both badass. Their job is to make us badass too. But the problem is that we probably won't like their methods. Saturn will withhold what you desire until you earn it through commitment to excellence. And Pluto represents all the stuff you're taught is bad, but isn't really bad, but is actually powerful and even kind of fun. So our will to power is really badly suppressed and fractured, especially if you're a woman. And where Pluto is exerting influence, we have to confront the aspect of ourselves that wants the power that is rightfully ours. But we're too afraid to take because we fear the consequences. We're afraid that power corrupts. So Pluto holds up what we subconsciously desire and fear and then we're left to fight with our ego to first claim our desire in our heart and then use that power wisely with great care and great responsibility. So a true badass is someone with tremendous power who knows how to use that power responsibly. A true badass doesn't hold back to make weaker people feel better. A true badass does not der derive their power from the weakness of others. A true badass doesn't need validation from others to know its badassness. A true badass knows itself. A true badass holds the vibration of badassery for all people and allows them to claim theirs too. But they would never dumb down their own power. Jesus Christ was a badass. He knew that badassness so deeply in the pit of his being that even lepers healed instantly. That's really badass. Michonne from The Walking Dead is a bad badass. She knew the power of her two, her armless two zombie system. She knew that so well that she was able to walk amongst the hordes of the dead, totally unscathed. Now, I consider myself a baby badass, a badass in the making. 
I'm practicing what I preach and I co-create with the universe. I've pulled myself out of victimhood and I've claimed my higher self as truth. Now look, I still got so much work to do, a lot, but I'm doing it every day. It's a practice. So to summarize, what does this mean for this week's spiritual guidance? Well, I want to suggest that we all need to sit down and think about what it is we want to bring in in the spring. To what do we want to give birth? What do you want to see manifest in your life come spring? That was the message. We have the new moon in Capricorn coming up on the 17th of January. And as you know, as I've said, new moons are the time of creation. During the full moon, we go inside and we deal with our shadow, our fear, our doubt, our internal processes so that we can heal them and grow and evolve. But during the new moon, it's a different story. That's the time when we look at our heart's desires and we really focus on what it is we want to manifest in the world of form. What we focus on during the new moon is to be birthed over the course of a year. Now, when your system is a vibrational match, that's when it will come into being. It takes about nine months for all this to happen. It's a gestation process of nine months. So you say yes to your desire at the new moon. It'll process through your system over the course of of a year. Now at the full moon, which comes six months after the new moon, you're going to be called upon to account for all your resistance to your desire full moon is shadow work. At that time, you will work through all your shadow and then you're going to be really aligned for your manifestation in the material world three to six months after that full moon. So it's like about a nine to 12 month journey altogether. It's like giving birth to a baby. (laughs) The new moon is conception and nine months later we give birth. All right. So we do the new moon ceremony. We say yes to our desires. We then do all the things we need to do to plan and nurture our seeds. And then we see everything come to fruition. Nine months to a year. Boom. Get it done, friend. All right. I just want to remind you about emotional wellness happy hour. It's the perfect time to get some sound advice and to get any help you need to cope with what you're experiencing at each moon. So it's coaching and intuition. I bring those together to help give you what you need. So the dates are all on my events calendar and there's a link to sign up in um, the video of the video here. So click that link get more information, sign up, and I look forward to seeing you on January 16th here in Costa Rica at 6.30. I need to make sure I have enough light. My God, it got so dark so quickly here. Oh my gosh. All right, friends, I'm signing off. Bye for now.